Hi, I'm going to be reading Flower Talk, How Plants Use Color to Communicate. This is written by Sarah Levine, that's me, and illustrated by Marcia Dions. Hey you, Psst, down here. That's right, I'm a plant and I'm talking to you. But don't get too used to it. We don't make a habit of talking to humans. I want to clear up some of your crazy ideas about what the colors of our flowers mean. We sit here growing, minding our own business, while you guys go on about how red roses stand for love and white ones are good for weddings and all kinds of mushy, ridiculous stuff. What a load of fertilizer. We're not sending our flowers. We're not using our flowers to send information to you, so butt out, okay? We use our flowers to talk to the animals. Why? We need some help down here. What would you do if your lugs were stuck in the ground for your entire life? How would you eat? How would you drink? How would you get your pajamas on? We can take care of some things ourselves. We get our food with help from the sun, and when it rains, our roots slurp up water. But we need help making our seeds, our babies. What's more important than that? Without seeds, there'd be no more plants. We'd be finished, kaput. To make a seed, we need pollen from a different plant of our same type. How do we get that? We can't just waltz over and take some. That's why we need animals. Here's what we do. We trip them into carrying it for us. We're nice about it though. We pay them a little something for their efforts. Well, usually. How do we get them to help? We advertise. We hold up big signs. Our flowers are our signs. They say, come on over. We have a special treat for you. And believe me, they come. Who wouldn't? Especially if they're hungry. If we're in luck, they bring along some pollen from a flower they visited earlier. Do they know they're doing this? Who knows? And who cares? It works and everyone's happy. So, what's the deal with the colors? A flower's color invites specific animals to visit. You seem like a bright kid, so I'm going to let you in on the conversation. Then maybe you could do me a favor and tell the humans about it, okay? Red flowers are usually talking to birds. The red flower's message is a top secret one for birds only. Most other pollinators are insects and they can't see the color red. A red flower says, hey, hummingbird over here, carry my pollen and I'll give you a sip of nectar. By the way, red flowers don't have much of an odor. Birds have a horrible sense of smell, so why bother making perfume for them? Blue and purple flowers talk to bees. Bees need flower pollen to feed their babies. They have special pockets on their legs to carry it home for their young. But some pollen always gets stuck on their bodies and pass to the next flowers they visit. Blue and purple flowers are saying, Yo bee, could you help me move some of my pollen and take some home for the kids? See, we can be thoughtful too. Yellow flowers are also talking to bees. Bees are our top helpers. I heard that scientists just figured out that bees have three favorite colors, blue, purple, and yellow. Took you guys long enough. We've known this for ages. That's why so many of us make flowers in these colors. We like the reliable help. Here's what a yellow flower says. Bees, bargain basement this way. Free food. Some white flowers talk to moths and bats. Moths and bats mostly fly at night. And when it's dark outside, what color shows up best? White, of course. White flowers are like giant signs that say, hey, come get your free nectar here. White flowers also put out perfume as an extra guide to help these animals find them. Frankly, I don't care for it myself, but I guess to a moth or a bat, it smells pretty good.
Brown flowers often talk to flies. Here's what they're saying. Get a whiff of our perfume. It's stinky just the way you like it. This is true. Brown flowers reek like something dead and rotten. And flies need to lay their eggs on dead things so their maggot babies will have something to eat when they hatch. I know, so gross. But a brown flower doesn't help a mama fly at all. She gets drawn in by the stench, but there's no meat there. Just a flower tricking a bug into doing work for free. The flower gets pollen, but the fly gets nothing. The only rotten thing around here is the deal. Green flowers aren't talking to anyone. Are they just shy? No, they don't talk to animals because they don't need help. Their pollen is carried by the wind. Plants with green flowers are green all over because they don't need animals to notice them. Would you bother getting dressed up if you didn't need to? I know I wouldn't. Do animals only go to flowers that are their favorite colors? No, but usually they do. For example, butterflies are drawn more to a flower's shape than its color. Butterflies like a steady platform to land on and tubes filled with nectar to sip with their long curly tongues. They visit flowers of many colors, but even butterflies have their favorites. White, purple, yellow, pink, red, and orange. That's a lot of favorites, don't you think? It's been good chatting, but it's time for you to leave now. Go take a hike. I'm pretty busy in case you haven't noticed, I'm making a new flower. It's going to be yellow with a nice roomy platform. I'm just about done with it. But before you leave, do you want to guess who I'm getting ready to talk to next? Okay, so this is the back matter, and rather than read the back matter, I think I'm going to show you the parts of the flower on a real flower. So here we go. There's girl parts and there's boy parts, and you can find this on your own flower if you look closely. So here's an orchid. I'm gonna take off the petals. Dorothy, go ahead and move in closely so people can see. Take off the petals, and what you look for is the, there's a part in the middle, and then there's parts around it. The part in the middle is the girl part, so here's the girl part. And then the parts around it are the male parts, and if you touch it with your finger, you get pollen on your finger. Here, see if you can. Oh, it's a crocus, I said the wrong name. Okay, so there's some boy parts, and there's the girl part in the middle. Now I'm gonna show you on a daffodil as well. All right, so here's the daffodil, and if you're doing this, go ahead and take the petals off. It seems a little weird, but then you can see the parts inside. And look for what looks different. So which one is taller or shorter in the middle? There's the tall one, so that has to be the girl part. And then the boy parts have pollen on it going all the way around. You can see on my finger the pollen. So let's take off the boy parts now. The boy parts will use their pollen to go to another girl part. They can go to this one. Let's pretend here my finger is going to be a bird. It's going to visit this one. It's going to go to this one and put the pollen there. And this one will put the pollen on this one. And then the boy parts fall off. And what you're left with is just the girl part and the bottom part, which is the ovary. And if you were to cut this open, you can do this if you have time with your parents or your grown up or your teacher. And you can open it up and you'll see the seeds are inside the girl part, the ovary. And this is what will get bigger and bigger and bigger and turn into the fruit. Okay, bye.